Hey guys and welcome back to another color grading tutorial on the channel. Uh, today we're doing a how to edit in a moody style for your Instagram. Um, so some examples of moody Instagram uh, editors are for example uh, Eventir. Uh, he basically shoots photos mainly in Iceland, uh, Norway, places like that. You can really see he has some nice moody vibes going on here being a really good example. Um, what we're going for is those nice faded blacks, those faded whites, desaturated colors um, and really vibrant sort of, well not vibrant but desaturated greens. Uh, another example is Marcel. Um, you can check his Instagram out here. This is his Instagram handle. He does those very nice sort of uh, faded shadows and moody looks as well. Um, again, he takes lots of photos in Norway, um, Iceland. Okay, so this is the photo we're going to be editing today. Now, um, the photo that we're going to be basing it off is this one here. Uh, I think pretty sure this is the same castle. Yes, this is the same castle. Obviously, he's taking it at a different angle. He's taking it from an aerial uh, point of view. Um, so if you do have any chance, go check me out on Instagram. My Instagram is Sebastian underscore JWB. It'd be great if you could go follow me over there. Um, and also go check out my brother, which is Matthew underscore GKB. This is his Instagram here. But without any further ado, let's get started with today's tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is come into the basics panel. Uh, and I'm just going to warm up this image slightly. So 6000 Kelvin, I think will do quite nicely. Obviously, that will depend on the image that you guys have got. Um, but that's what I'm going for in this photo. Uh, and I'm going to leave the tint alone. I don't really want to add any more greens, I don't think. No, so leave the tint alone. Uh, then I'm going to come into the highlights. I'm going to brighten up those highlights. He tends to have very nice bright highlights. And then I'm going to get the shadows. Uh, lift up those shadows just so I can see a bit more of what's going on. Expose this image quite nicely. Um, I've overdone the shadows a little bit here just because I'm then going to come into the whites, drag up the whites to about plus 30, plus 40, and then drop those blacks just to crush those blacks quite nicely to probably about minus 50. You can see here, if we check out this photo, he has very dark blacks going on here. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm going to come down to clarity, just drop off the clarity. He has very soft photos here, so you can see there's not much clarity going on. So I'm going to get the clarity and I'm going to drop it off to minus 22. Uh, then I'm going to get the vibrance, I'm going to decrease the vibrance and also decrease the saturation as well. Okay, so that's it for the basic panel. That's really just starting off with the exposure, but we haven't done too much there. Uh, the next thing is the tone curve. Tone curve is where it's really quite important to get this moody look. So first of all, we're going to introduce the standard S curve like we do in basically all of our color grading tutorials. So introduce that S curve and if you guys aren't familiar yet you can go check out some of the other videos where we talk about this in more detail. Um, but all this is doing is introducing some more contrast into the photo. Now you can see why earlier I lifted up those shadows. In fact I may go back and lift up the shadows just a little bit more because as soon as you start to increase the tone curve here and decrease the shadows here you are really losing a lot of detail in the shadows. So we're going to come back down here and we are just going to lift up and introduce a nice amount of fade. So here he really doesn't have very crushed blacks. He has those very sort of grey soft blacks. Um, so I'm just going to come here and I'm going to lift those up slightly, lift up the shadows there, and I'm just sort of messing around until I get something I like the look of. Okay, so I think we're probably done there. Get the whites at the top and we're going to fade off the highlights there. Not too much, just drop those down like that. Okay, so I think that's probably it for the tone curve. We may end up coming back to that in a while. Uh, but go on to the HSL slider, and this is where it's really quite important. Um, he, if you have a look at his photo, has those sort of brown and orangey greens. He really doesn't have much vibrant green going on. So you can see here the... Con complete contrast in colors and we have really really vibrant greens going on here so what I'm going to go ahead and do is come to the hue panel and we're going to get the yellows and you can see if I drag the yellows uh, to the right we get really vibrant greens if I drag it all the way to the left we get sort of more purpley stuff going on here and in the green so I'm going to drag the yellows down to about minus 20 minus 10 uh, minus 12 is good here and then I'm going to get the greens and I'm not going to drag them all the way down to minus 100 but probably somewhere down to about minus 45 I think is a good bet. There aren't really many reds in this photo but I'm going to drag the reds down to minus 24. Uh, now because if you look at his photo he really doesn't have, his blues are slightly teal here. You can see in the highlights he has tealy blues um, but nothing too extreme. What we're going to end up having to do later on is go... Um, so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to get the aquas, I'm going to drag the aquas up to about plus 30 and I'm going to drag the blues up as well to about plus 25. Uh, you'll see why I've done that a little bit later, um, but as for the purples and magentas, probably going to leave those alone, there aren't really any purples in this image. Okay, so for saturation, what we want to do is make sure that these greens are quite desaturated. So come to the yellows, we're going to drop the yellow saturation down to minus 70, it's quite an extreme drop, but you can see here we're making the castle slightly more grey. Um, 
like in his photo there's not much going on with the castle it's very gray slightly tealy but we're going to drop down the yellow to about minus 70 and then we're going to get the greens and we're going to drop the greens to about minus 30 i think you can see if i go too far the image looks looks very black and white um, so minus 30 is a good bet then we're going to get the oranges and we're probably going to increase the orange saturation to plus 35 in fact the red highlights in the tower i'm going to try and get rid of so i'm going to drop down the reds to about minus 54. Um, for the blues and aquas I'm going to probably increase the blues uh, slightly, increase the saturation of the aquas, and then leave the purples and magentas alone. Now, if we come down to luminance, this is just going to adjust the brightness of each individual colour. So again, if I get the reds, I'm just going to increase the reds to plus 100 here, plus 70. Darken the oranges to minus 50. Yellows, I'm going to brighten up, because you can see if I drop it, it the image starts to look a bit too flat. Um, so I'm going to brighten up the yellows to about plus 35, 33, and get the greens and also brighten up the greens to about plus 20. As for the blues, brighten up the blues, but I'm going to get the aquas and probably drop the aquas to minus 55. So that's it really for the HSL slider. I'm not going to do much more. Now I'm going to ignore everything else and come straight down to the camera calibration to start off with. If you go check out his photo, you can see here he has a very base layer of teal and orange going on is basically what's happening here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to come to our red primary. We're going to increase the red primary to plus, and then we're going to decrease the blue primary to about minus 40, minus 30. You can see if I do completely, we get a very brown, um, orangey looking image, um, which is really kind of not what we're going for, but you can see the similarity in the trees. So we're going to drop off the blue primary just a touch and get the red primary and drop that back off to about there and increase the saturation in the blue primary. Um, so you can copy down those numbers if you guys want. Um, but once we've done that, we probably want to come back to the HSL slider and just readjust these here. Uh, the hues, I think we want to add a little bit more green there. We want to drop off the saturation in the oranges. I don't want too much going on there. Drop off the blues. Um, I want that to be slightly more gray. And the oranges just a little bit more. The reds we can leave alone. As for the greens, I want to brighten up the greens just a little bit as well. Um, and then for the hues, uh, probably bring back some of the greens um, just a little bit somewhere around there So we're beginning to get his kind of look going on uh, here. Obviously. He's got some foreground uh, Blur interest going on here as the saturation probably the yellows I'm just tempted just to increase the saturation in the yellows as well um, And the brightness I think is probably good. I think it's probably good So if I press the backslash key you can see what this image look you can see this image looked like before uh, And now the after we've it really do have changed it quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that up uh, and then we're going to come into split toning and on the highlights press alt on your keyboard drag the highlights until you get a color that you think is suitable for your highlights so here we're going for 45 on our highlights and then the shadows we're going to just drag those up and we're going to try and go about 170 i think in our shadows and then just drag up our saturation about plus 15 somewhere around there okay so we've really kind of made this image quite moody if i press the backslash key again you can see the after so that's the before that's the after i come back to basics and i'm actually going to drop off the highlights just a little bit more uh, and i think that's basically all we can do with this image um, i don't want to do too much more but you can but you can really see how we have introduced a much more moody image uh, you can if you wanted to to increase the fade a little bit more i think it's slightly bit green so i might just take up the tint to about 23 um, just to take out some of that green. So I copied and pasted this onto a couple of other photos. You can see what it looks like. Um, we have this photo. So this is the before and then this is the after. So again, just another photo. I haven't done anything with these presets. I've literally just copied it across. Um, again, a before and then the after. So with this one, you'd probably want to uh, brighten it up just a little bit, maybe brightening up that image a little bit more. Um, obviously, you can spend some more time on it. Finally, we just have this photo here. Um, which is, hasn't got a lot going on with it, but it's just a moody type photo and then this is what the preset did to it So I hope you guys did enjoy today's tutorial um, if you would like a moody preset pack Just let me know um, and I will maybe get around to making it in the future, but I hope you did enjoy I hope this was useful um, Go ahead and check us out on Instagram. Go ahead check out our preset packs They're for sale on our website. I will see you in the next video live long and prosper